Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jordan and I wanted to make this video because as some of you guys know, I'm in the low vision community and um, I wanted to show just some things that I do on a daily basis that have helped my self connect back with my body, help me with anxiety and depression. And one of those, two of those things is yoga and meditation, which all in all to me are kind of very similar concepts, similar things. Meditation is more of a practice where you sit with yourself and yoga I feel is more of a meditative practice that you're doing with your body. So I wanted to do a little bit of a beginner's class on it. This is super, super beginner. Um, in my opinion, this is available for anybody with any type of um, like physical capabilities. This isn't going to be a challenging experience. Hopefully this will help you tap back into yourself, tap back into your body and um, learn a little bit of things about yourself and about life through this. So um, meditation, I think is such an amazing practice. It's pretty much in all different types of cultures for thousands of years. Um, and meditation has taught me and I know a lot of other people a lot about myself and about life and um, it's helped a lot with my anxiety and depression. And so when you begin to meditate, um, a lot of people think that the objective is to be able to silence your mind and really in my understanding and in my perspective, meditation is really just an opportunity for you to connect with yourself and be um, more aware of what goes on in your mind and also teaches you how to um, let go of those things a little bit quicker and easier. So the first thing that we're gonna do is um, jump into a little meditation. Um, I personally practice Vipassana meditation, which is simply just noticing, um, noticing the sounds that you hear, noticing the sensations that you feel in your body, noticing the things that come up in your mind, and um, without judgment, just allowing those things when you notice them to just kind of float out of your mind. So um, one of the key things to meditation is the way that you are going into meditation, I highly recommend sitting um, on your sitting bones, not up against a wall, not lying down, and this actually helps you drop into the meditation practice much easier. And so I like to start sitting down. Um, I do like to have my legs um, not crossed because you may uh, cut off circulation and your legs will start to get tingly, which will be a distraction. So if you can sit with your legs, just in somewhat of a position like this, um, again, not crossed. You can always sit on a pillow, like some people will put a pillow between their legs and sit like this, or some people will sit with a pillow kind of on the edge of their um, sitting bones. And so it kind of allows you to prop your hips up a little bit higher than your knees, which can sometimes be helpful for you. But for me, the best way for me to drop into my meditation practice is actually just sitting in a seated position with my spine as straight as I can with my head in a sensation of like it's being like lifted, pulled up. Now, you can sit either with your hands open or with your hands on your knees, or I like to sit with my hands in a mudra, which is just having my hand on top of the other one and with my uh, thumbs touching. So you can sit however you want. The really most important thing is to not be 100% comfortable. Um, that if, if you are 100% comfortable, you run the risk of potentially falling asleep. So it's really important to just be sitting in a seated position of some sort, not too comfortable. Um, and really the objective here is to try to silent your mind. I like to focus on my breathing. Um, I like to focus on inhaling, exhaling, and the fact that I'm sitting. So I literally will, in my mind, inhale, exhale, and then take notice that I'm sitting. And so if you can just focus on those three things, inhaling, exhaling, sitting, that's gonna help you have some sort of center, some sort of place that you're focusing on. 
And really what's going to happen when you start to meditate is you are um, going to be focusing on the inhale, exhale, and sitting, but you're going to have thoughts come into your mind. You're going to think about something you need to do for the rest of the day. You're going to hear a sound outside that may be distracting. And the point is, is to just simply notice that you're experiencing that and then, then allow it to just leave your mind um, and leave your mind without judgment. A lot of people, when they start meditating, they get very frustrated with themselves. It actually creates more anxiety and more um, depression because they beat up on themselves thinking they're not doing it correctly. And really the objective is simply noticing and staying, staying grounded with the inhale, exhale, and sitting going on in your mind but things will come up um, if you have visual issues like me you may like see flashing lights as your eyes are closed but um, the whole point is just to focus on the fact that you're inhaling exhaling and you're sitting and you're noticing noticing what comes up and not having judgment for that so we're going to do a little bit of a meditation um, I personally, it helps me focus to not have sound, um, not have like music playing in the background. You will have sounds coming from around you, from outside, from maybe somewhere else in your home. But the simple task that you're supposed to do is just notice that you're hearing that and then just going back to the inhaling, exhaling and sitting. So we're going to go ahead and get started, get you a comfortable pillow, get in a semi-comfortable position, get your hands in a place that feels comfortable, feels safe for you. Again, I like to have my hands in a mudra in my lap and um, we're going to slowly close our eyes. And we're going to begin inhaling and then exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. And I want you to continue inhaling and exhaling. The point of inhaling and exhaling is not to do the biggest, deepest breaths that you can. You really want to maybe take a couple of deep breaths in the beginning and then eventually allow yourself to go to a very steady, just natural breath. And remembering that you're focusing on just the inhale, the exhale, and noticing that you're sitting. And as you're focusing on your breath, I want you to relax your face Maybe unclench your jaw, remove the tongue from the top of your mouth, relax your forehead and your eyebrows, and continuing just to focus on your breath and focusing on the fact that you are sitting. And remember, things may come up. You may start to think about something. Your mind may start to wander. But your only job is to just notice what comes up and just allow that thought to leave your mind as if it's just a cloud literally passing by. Just focusing on your inhale, your exhale, and noticing that you're sitting.
one of the key factors of this practice is just allowing yourself to notice the things that inch into your mind, allowing to notice how you receive yourself whenever you have those thoughts that come into your mind. Are you judging yourself? Are you allowing those thoughts to easily release? Are you giving yourself forgiveness and grace when your mind starts to wander? Or are you judging? And you're focusing on your inhale and your exhale and that you're sitting. And as we're sitting, our bodies may start to have different sensations. You may feel a bit of discomfort. You may notice a bit of tightness, tightness somewhere in your body. But your only job is just to notice that. You don't need to make any shifts in your posture. You just need to simply notice and allow that thought, that sensation to just leave your awareness. And you're just inhaling and exhaling and you're just noticing that you're sitting. Now I want to invite you to slowly start to wiggle your fingers, maybe wiggle your toes, let her open your eyes, and just notice the still stillness that's in your body, that's in your mind. Maybe take a couple deep breaths in and exhale. Another deep breath in and exhale. Now I want you to sit up straight if you're not already in a straight seated position. And we're going to start to slowly move our bodies and dive deeper into our practice of connecting with our body. We're going to start by reaching our arms all the way up to where they touch up over our head. And then we're going to grab our right hand to our left ear and begin to pull our right ear towards our shoulder as our left hand comes to the ground. And while you're here, you're just going to continue to naturally breathe. You're inhaling, you're exhaling. And then you're going to release your right hand from your left ear and place your right hand back on the ground. And then we're going to pull our hands back up over our head as they touch up above us, above our heads. And we're going to take our left hand to our right ear as our right hand touches the ground and our left ear comes towards our left shoulder. And you're going to continue to breathe. 
You're inhaling, you're exhaling. You're not holding your breath. And then you're going to release that left hand to the side of your left body. We're going to bring our hands up over our head, stretching them up tall. And then we're going to bring our left hand to our right knee and our right hand back behind our back as we twist and look behind us. And we're continuing to inhale and exhale. Now we're going to bring our hands back up over our head as our right hand meets our left knee and our left hand reaches behind us as we look back to our left. And we're continuing to inhale and exhale. Now we're going to reach our hands back up over our head and bring them down as we put our hands onto our knees. And we're going to go into some neck rolls. We're going to start by looking down and going clockwise as our right ear comes towards our right shoulder as our head falls back to the back and as our left ear meets our left shoulder. And I want you to do a couple of neck rolls. I personally like to do these very slowly. So you're just moving your head in a clockwise position as one ear meets one shoulder as your head falls from the front to the back. And after you've done a couple of those going clockwise, I invite you to go counterclockwise as your left ear meets your left shoulder. Your head falls back towards the back. Your right ear meets your right shoulder and your head falls towards the front. And you're just going to do a couple of circles here. Now bringing your head back to center, back to a normal seated position. We're going to, I'm going to switch positions just so you can see me. We're going to bring our legs out in front of us. They're going to be straight. And as we begin to go into more of our bodies, the thing to focus on is that all of our bodies are different. All of our capabilities are different. And one thing that really helps you um, kind of with life, at least for me, is that yoga has really helped me focus on my own capabilities, my own self, my own strengths, my own weaknesses, and has allowed me to really notice when I start to compare myself to others or judge myself for not being able to do what others can do. And as you can imagine, um, somebody that has low vision, this has been very helpful for me. Um, having a daily yoga practice is just being able to be aware of when I'm comparing myself or when I'm comparing myself to others or when I'm judging uh, myself for not having the capabilities that others can have. So I want you, I want to invite you to just really, um, Listen to your body and focus on what you're able to do and what feels good for you. Don't focus necessarily on what I'm doing or what you think you should be doing. Just focusing on what feels good to your body and what you're able to do. So starting with our legs out in front of us straight, I have my legs, my feet flexed up towards the sky. And I'm just going to reach up, reach my hands up over my head and I'm going to begin to slowly hinge my hips as I bring my hands towards my feet. One of the purposes of doing this stretch is to literally hinge at your hips and not 
round your spine. You want to continue to have your spine as flat as you possibly can and just allow yourself to hinge. If you can touch your toes, amazing. If you can't, it's totally okay to leave your hands on your shins and just really focus on hinging your hips and keeping your spine straight. And just be able to do whatever your body feels comfortable doing. The point of doing yoga and tapping back into your body is not to force your body to do things that it's not ready to do yet or that doesn't feel good. It's just simply accepting where your body is right now. So I want to continue to just invite you to hinge your hips, have your spine straight and your hands maybe sitting on your shins or maybe they're touching your toes. And take a couple of deep breaths here. I have a slight gaze towards my toes. I'm not looking up. I'm just looking kind of in front of me. I'm still breathing. Now I want to invite you to grab your right foot and bring it close up to your hips where you're kind of in somewhat of a four position with your left leg straight and your right leg is um, folded. I have my foot sitting at the crease part of where my knee is. And we're just going to sit in this four shape and we're going to maybe grab our left toes or maybe we're going to place our hands on our left shin and we're just going to continue to breathe in this position. Now you may find that your right knee is easily falling towards the ground or maybe your right knee is um, somewhat up like towards the sky and both is totally okay. It really is just whatever your flexibility is with your body. Again, do not force your knee down towards the ground. Just kind of allow your right knee to um, sit wherever feels comfortable. And we're just sitting here in this position, doing a couple, of, couple more deep inhales in and exhales. As we have our left leg straight with our left toes flexed and our right leg folded and our right foot um, placed right where our knee is on our left foot. Now we're going to switch legs and we're going to bring our left leg, our left foot into our crevice of our right knee. We're going to straight our right leg with our right toes flexed towards the sky. And again, we're going to either reach towards our toes while we're hinging at our hips or we're going to have our hands placed on our right shin. And we're just gonna sit here and breathe. Again, remembering that you're just simply focusing on the sensations of your body, focusing on your breath, not judging your body or judging yourself on your capabilities, not comparing yourself to me or what you think that you should be able to do. You're just simply being present here with your body and what it's able to do today and not judging your body for its capabilities. Now bringing your left foot back to meet your right foot straight and we're going to bring our hands back up over our head as we reach down towards our toes, hinging at our hips and keeping our spine straight with a soft gaze towards our toes or directly in front of us. And we're still continuing to breathe. We're inhaling, we're exhaling. We're not judging our bodies. We're not comparing ourselves. We're just simply in acceptance of where our body is at today. Now I want to slowly move our knees 
underneath us as we go in a tabletop position. So you're going to find that your knees are going to be about hip, hip distance um, separated. Your knees will be in that position and your hands are going to meet right underneath your shoulders. It's very important to have your shoulders directly over your wrist, your knees directly under your hips, and your spine is naturally going to find somewhat of a straight posture. And as we sit in this position, we're just gonna take a couple of deep breaths in and out as we settle into this position. Now you may start to have a eagerness to kind of play around with your body as you're in this tabletop position. You may want to do some circles over your wrist. Maybe you're doing that clockwise. I'm just slowly bringing my shoulders slightly over my wrist and then bringing them back towards the back as I'm kind of doing these rolls over my wrist. Now I'm going to go back counterclockwise and doing rolls over my wrist as I'm in this tabletop position. It's really important to make sure that whatever you do on one side, you do on the other side. And again, you can just sit in a tabletop position, but I also invite you to just listen to your body and see what your body's asking of you. I right now in my tabletop position am going to turn my hands where my hands are on the ground. I'm flipping over my hands as I'm in this tabletop position and I may slowly start to sit down just a bit as I'm getting a good stretched stretch in my wrists. And I'm going to flip my hands back over where the bottoms of my hands are on the ground. I'm going to maybe twist my wrist where my fingers are slightly pointed towards my knees, twisting my hands back, and then I may slowly start to sit down a bit with my sitting bones going towards my feet to get a little bit of a stretch of my wrist. Now putting my hands back to its natural position with my fingers pointing towards out from me. I'm going to reach my left hand up to the sky as my right hand is still below the shoulder. And then I'm going to thread the needle with my left hand coming underneath my right shoulder. And you can place your hand or you can place your head on the ground if you're able to do that or you can just simply have your left hand underneath your right shoulder. You've thread your needle. And we're gonna sit here for a couple of breaths. And then I'm gonna bring my left hand back up over my head into the sky and place my left hand back on the ground. Remembering that my hands should always be directly underneath my shoulders. Now to switch sides, I'm going to bring my right hand up to the sky. Maybe I'm going to twist out my wrist as, it up, as my hand's up there. And then I'm going to bring my right hand underneath my left shoulder. And again, you can bring your cheek, your head down towards the ground if that's something that's available to you right now, or you can continue to just have your left, your right hand underneath your left shoulder. And we're gonna sit here and breathe for a couple of breaths. Now we're gonna bring our right hand back up to the sky and bring our right hand back down to the ground. 
Now I'm going to invite you to do some cat cows. So you're going to have make sure that your wrists are still directly underneath your shoulders and your knees are directly under your hips. And you're going to gaze up as you're arching your spine. And then you're going to gaze down as you're rounding your spine. Now you're going to gaze up as you're arching your spine and gaze down as you're rounding your spine. And I wanna invite you to just do this on your own, at your own pace. And you can do as many cat cows as you want and you can maybe continue to stretch out your wrist, play around with your body as you're in this tabletop position. Really the point, one of the points of yoga is really just listening to your body and listening to what your body's asking you of right now and kind of just tapping into what feels good for you. You really don't need to be terribly focused on what I'm doing or what a neighbor is doing. You're really just kind of listening to what your body is asking of you right now and just being graceful and forgiving with your body if it's not up to doing certain things today. It may be up to doing those things tomorrow. It's just kind of being present with where your body is right now. Okay, so coming back to a neutral tabletop position, I'm going to have my toes kind of curling down underneath me as I'm getting ready to go into my downward dog. I'm going to lift my knees slightly as I bring my body into a downward dog, straightening out my legs, straightening out my arms. My head is slightly hanging down towards the ground as I'm in somewhat of a V shape with my body. And in this position, this is your downward facing dog. This is your position. There's really no need to force yourself into putting your heels all the way towards the ground you really are able to keep your knees bent if that feels good or keeping your heels up off of the ground. Really whatever feels good to your body and just listening to your body. I'm bringing my chest close to my thighs, to my knees, just really stretching out my shoulders and this downward facing dog. And I'm still breathing, not holding my breath. And I'm pedaling out. Me personally, I like to pedal out my, my knees, my feet. This is really allowing me to slowly get into the stretch instead of forcing my body into this downward facing dog. And we're still breathing. Now I want to invite you to come back to a seated position. I'm going to face you guys. And I'm going to come back to where my sitting bones are sitting directly on the ground. My spine is up straight. My hands for me are placed on my knees. You can maybe put the tops of your hands on your knees with your hands facing up, or maybe you're gonna go back to somewhat of a mudra where your hands are sitting into your lap. Just whatever feels good for you. And we're just gonna sit in the seated position and take a couple of deep breaths in and exhaling out. This time I want to invite you to fill the lower part of your stomach up as 
big and deep as you can, as if you're creating some sort of a balloon within your stomach. And when you inhale in, you're bringing your belly button all the way to your spine. And as you exhale, you're filling up your stomach into that balloon. We're taking a couple of deep breaths in. Just regrounding ourselves, tapping back into our bodies. Now I'm going to turn my body, but I'm going to invite you to find yourself in a position where you're lying directly on the ground, your legs stretched out in front of you, and we're going to bring our left leg up into like a tabletop position as we're laying down, and we're going to bring our right leg, our right ankle directly to meet our left knee. And we're going to come into somewhat of a four position again, but just in a lying down position. I'm grabbing my left leg and, and grasping my fingers behind my left thigh as I'm pulling a little bit towards my abdomen which is creating a really great stretch on my right hip. So again, you're lying down on your back, you're bringing your left leg, your left foot into the air, into somewhat of a tabletop position. Your left leg is now into a 90 degree angle of some sort as your right leg moves your right ankle on top of your left knee and I'm grasping behind my left thigh and bringing my left leg towards my abdomen. This is just giving me a really good stretch behind my right hip. And we're just still breathing. We're just really tapping into the sensations of our body, listening to our body, not judging our body just having gratitude for what our body is able to do today. Now we're going to switch legs where our right leg goes up towards the sky, comes down into our right leg, comes into like a 90 degree angle, the same way you'd find a tabletop position as our left ankle meets our right knee and our hands grasp behind our right thigh. and I'm pulling my right thigh towards my abdomen to give myself a good stretch behind my left hip. And I'm just breathing. Now releasing our left ankle from our right knee, we're going to slowly bring our legs straight out in front of us as they meet one another. You can have your hands behind, beside you, beside your body, either facing up towards the sky as if you're receiving, or maybe your hands are facing down towards the ground and more of a grounded position. I'm going to put my hands facing up to receive. We're just going to tap in back to our breath and to our body. Noticing the sensations, maybe you feel a little bit tingly, maybe you feel a little bit more loose. Maybe you're feeling a little bit more relaxed.
and remembering while we're lying here that you may have things come into your, into your awareness. You may have thoughts that pop up into your mind. But the only thing that you're supposed to do is just notice them, not judge them, forgive yourself for whatever they may be, and just allow them, allow those thoughts to pass through your mind. Now slowly we're going to bring our knees towards our chest. We're going to have our hand meet the opposite elbow as we give our knees a hug. Maybe you begin to rock yourself side to side. Maybe you begin to circle your knees in a clockwise position. Don't forget if you're circling your knees to go the opposite direction in a counterclockwise position. And give yourself one big, great hug as you fall over onto your right or your left side into somewhat of a fetal position. And as you're in this position, I want you to just notice and have gratitude for your body and all of the amazing things that it can do today. Know that your body is going to change over time and be totally okay with those thoughts, but be mostly present with where you're at today and just giving gratitude for yourself as you gave yourself a few minutes today to tap back into yourself and to your mind and to your body. And I want you to slowly find yourself back into a seated position with your two sitting bones on the ground, your knees out beside you. And maybe take a couple of deep breaths in and out. And I want you to reach your hands up over your head into the sky. And as you bring them down into a prayer position towards your heart. I want you to recognize yourself today for giving yourself just a few minutes of peace, of gratitude, of love. And I want you to honor this little practice that you just did today to help you feel a little bit more centered throughout your day. Namaste. Now you may begin to start to slowly flutter open your eyes if they're closed like mine were. And I just want to maybe invite you to tap back in with yourself and with your body. I know I feel a little bit more relaxed. I feel a little bit more grounded. I really personally enjoy starting my day off with um, a short meditation, which is what we, we tapped into a bit today. And then also diving into a little bit of a yoga practice to tap back into my body. Again, these practices are simply just to help us be more aware of how we treat ourselves, how be more aware of the sensations in our bodies, um, allow us to practice non-judgment of ourselves or of our bodies, allow us to practice non-comparison to others, um, and allow us to just be aware and notice the thoughts that are coming in and out and allowing us to practice releasing those thoughts. These two practices amongst many practices, which I'll be sharing with you guys have helped me tremendously with my mental health. Um, with, if you are having some sort of life event or life circumstance, that's creating some sort of anxiety or depression. It's really important to have a few moments in your day, whether it be in the beginning or the end of your day to just tap in with yourself. And so I hope that you found this helpful. 
Again, this was not a super intermediate yoga or meditation experience, but this is really just a beginner experience, a beginner practice to help you kind of learn to just tap in with yourself and, um, you know, focus on practicing the non-judgment and the non-comparison. So I hope you found this a little bit peaceful to start or end your day. And please um, like, share this video with somebody, uh, subscribe to this channel. I am going to be sharing a lot more of my practices that I do. I have several like daily rituals, whether it be the foods that I'm eating, the herbs that I'm taking, the physical or mental practices that I do on a daily basis. All of these things have significantly helped me with my mental health, with calming myself. Um, it's helped a lot with my vision as I find myself less stressed, less anxiety, less depression. My vision seems to be a lot more clear and that is physically and like metaphorically. Um, I am just a lot more clear when I'm tapped in with myself. So, um, please subscribe to this channel and I, um, please comment what you thought below comment. Um, if you thought this was easy or hard to follow, I am just beginning learning to, um, you know, guide people through this. So please comment your thoughts below or comment things that you're hoping to see in the future from me and subscribe to my channel. I will be posting a lot more about my own personal wellness, uh, physical and mental wellness journey. So see you guys in the next video.